Welcome to another video. This one is going to be kind of another little tool talk. I see a lot of people asking questions about like how to melt metal safely. Um, and I will go into various resources for that, um, mentioning some brands, tools, methods, things like that. So the one we're gonna talk about today is the one that I have the most personal experience with, which is this. This is the Kerr Electromelt Melter. So now, in some ways, this video is going to be a little bit irrelevant because you can't actually buy this machine anymore. Kerr, the brand, no longer makes these machines. They, I don't, I believe they still exist as a company, um, but I think they started focusing more on like dental products and things like that. So this was kind of like, it does apply to dental, but also jewelry, and they just kind of pulled out of the jewelry market entirely. Now that all said, whereas you can't get this exact machine with this branding, and I know the warranty on this is probably toast, things like that. Um, the machine, the actual machine, wherever they get this produced, was bought up by Pepe Tools. Pepe Tools then renamed it, I believe it's called the Venturi or Ventura Melter, and it is effectively the exact same tool, just has a little different name printed on the side. I believe it takes the same kind of crucibles, it performs the same, uh, I'm not sure about price, I, if anything it's actually gone down in price, uh, which is all positive. So. Basically how this works is you have a graphite crucible which sits inside of this black hole, which you can't really see. But anyway, uh, inside this is a ceramic shielded element, I think. And at the bottom is the thermometer or the pyrometer. And the pyrometer actually goes up inside of the crucible right in here, so you get a more accurate read. It's not just reading the outside of the, the, the crucible. And that takes your temperature, which is then digitally monitored by this. And you can set this high or low, however you like. Um, I believe the lowest it will go is just like 70 degrees Fahrenheit. It's all in Fahrenheit, by the way, so make sure you have a conversion chart for that for any Europeans or anyone like that. Uh, it might be fixable. There are settings that you can choose. I just haven't fiddled with them. So with this digital thing, we just kind of turn it on, adjust the temperature up and down. I believe the lowest it will go is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And the highest I've gone is 2012 degrees Fahrenheit. However, I have noticed that as it ramps up, the metal will kind of carry it a little bit higher. So I've seen the pyrometer go up to 2030 degrees Fahrenheit when I'm doing bronze. And I believe that was just kind of like a natural thing. Now it doesn't progress any higher. It turns off the element. It has old style switches inside so you can hear them click on and off according to how much heat is required. Now you see I've touched the, the graphite crucible. I've got graphite on my fingers now. So I'm gonna be careful. Now uh, I have never actually seen proof of this. I've only ever heard people say it as opinions. Uh, that if you go up to high temperatures like I've been doing, uh, about 2000 degrees for bronze, it reduces the life of the machine. Now, I, maybe that's true. Um, I'm inclined to believe there is some truth to it, but how true, I don't know. Some say, oh, it, it drops the functionality of the machine to 20%. Well, I, I don't understand what that's supposed to mean. 20% what? 20% lifetime? What's the actual lifetime? No one has any real finite numbers. It's all just opinions at this point. So anyway, like I said, I'm sure there is truth that if you run this machine higher for long periods of time, it does put more wear and tear on the elements and the actual insulation and the, the melting chamber basically. But I don't know how much. Like I did say, I got this machine in, I think it was January, January of 2018. And I've been using it this entire time it's very hard for me to say exactly how many casts we do, we have done in that amount of time. However, it's still working flawlessly. And I have been using bronze since the very first time we got it. Something else to note about this machine is that this is the one kilogram version. This was the smallest that they come, uh, but they do come bigger. There's two sizes. There's the one kilo and the three kilo. So I wish that when we had got this machine that I had spent those few extra hundred dollars and got the three kilo, kilo version because of the size. As you can see by the size of this crucible, it's pretty good if you're only using 
grain metal, like brand new stuff, but I like to do the recycling method. So I've got 50% new material to 50% recycled material, and they all get melted together in the crucible. You can recycle metal no problem after a couple of casts. Uh, you have to make sure there's no plaster investment left on it. I will also pickle it, remove all the oxide, and then I will tumble them, and that kind of just removes anything that might have been sticking to it and gives it a little bit of a shine. And then I know that metal is clean. And pretty much every time I've got a really good cast. So referring to recycled metal, this is a big chunk of bronze. This was um, used in a previous, it was actually mentioned in a previous video. This had a whole pile of rings on it. But as you can see by the button, the button's a little bit big. You do want to have a nice button when you cast because what it's doing is pushing from the top down, gravity, pushing everything in, as well as getting vacuum from all the sides. Now this is great, however, it doesn't fit in my melter. <laughs> so if I had the three kilo version, this would be no problem. Now this one has already been cast. However, when I get it, it comes in an ingot form, and this is the end cap to one of them. It does get bigger from there. But as you can see, like that's not gonna fit in this melter at all. Uh, what I do is I run this through on a bandsaw, on a steel bandsaw, and I cut that 20 pound ingot up into chunks. Something more like this, which does fit in the machine. Melter. I've heard numerous comments of people saying that when I tip this, it freaks them out because, well, how is it staying in there? Well, it's just friction really, but it's working, so. There's no mechanism holding this, this in place, but I mean, even though we're pretty much tipped over, it's not coming out. The metal will flow very quickly, so I have never have a problem pouring it like this. So a little bit more detail about the crucibles themselves. So these crucibles are graphite. Now graphite is great material, very clean, very nice. Um, when, when graphite burns inside the melting chamber or gets super hot, it is burning. Um, but only when it comes in contact with oxygen. So as long as this is inside and this is closed tightly, there's very little oxygen inside, the graphite doesn't burn all that quickly. Um, I've seen people get three castings out of one crucible, out of some of the poor quality ones. Now this is maybe, I think, the original one that this came with. As you can see, it's quite burned out especially around the rim, because the rim is what's above the melting chamber with the most oxygen around it. So that is what's going to be broken down the fastest. And I'm okay with that. It's just a consumable item. Now you'd think that all graphite is graphite. It's just the same, right? Well, I don't have that experience. I've seen the cheap Amazon ones where they get three casts out of it. And then there's these kinds which came with the machine. Somehow there's just a much higher quality, I suppose, and they last a lot longer, somewhere in the 20 to 25 casts range. So that's the video for today. A little bit of a tool talk about melting metals. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. This is definitely one of the more dangerous aspects and definitely one of the most necessary aspects of casting. There's various ways you can make a mold but there's very few ways that you can melt metal. I've obviously given my opinion on this tool. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to drop a comment or message us on other socials. If you've had your own experience with these machines, good or bad, still open to hearing about them. Love to know what happens elsewhere in the world. So if you haven't seen the video from last week, we did mention that we've changed things up in the channel a little bit with a membership program. Uh, we're offering a lot more in terms of uh, video extras, you know, exposure profiles for new resins that we're trying, uh, models that we make or may find useful for the community, you know, like calibration models and things like that. So if you're interested, we would love your support. Feel free to go look at that video or look somewhere down here. There's probably a button so you can join the community and get some of those benefits as well. So that's all I have to say about this. I will see everybody in the next video.